the chance of Ruto must go coming in not from Nyanza not from the coast but from deep inside the Rift Valley has refused to leave the minds of Kenyans. Twitter has been ablaze with the hashtag Ruto must go over the last few days. And even an explanation by Kipchumba Mukomen that it was a different Ruto being spoken about has not slowed down or quenched the cries of Ruto must go. And then there are the very controversial remarks by Rift Valley politician, former Nandi Hills legislator, Alfred Keter. In one of those quotes, in a video that has gone viral, Keter says the following. And I quote, if you don't fix economy, we change you. End of quote. Ay, 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 Is this really happening? Or is it too much to be true? As many Kenyans want to believe. Actually, for those who have been following this channel closely, what is unfolding now was predictable months ago. Indeed, it was predictable as early as late last year. Indeed, the truth is the Root Administration is a perfect case study of what you don't do if you want a stable government, of what you don't do if you want your government to survive. It is a perfect case study. Giving you all the tips and tricks, indeed the most effective, of how to quickly get yourself out of power without anybody's help, not even the opposition's help or Raila's help. That is the truth. Many young bloggers supporting UDA have been laughing off the points we have brought forward on this channel, emphasizing the truism that you don't do things which the Root Administration has been doing and you remain in power. They've been laughing it off by saying, Chris, what happened? Root is still in power and he'll remain in power for the next 10 years and there's nothing you can do about it. And of course these youngsters in their confidence <laughs> have forgotten that in politics cause and effect may take a little time but it is just a matter of time. Because the truth is nobody should be called a genius for having predicted what is unfolding now, months ago. Nobody should be called even smart. It was too obvious. But the thing that has happened here that is totally unexpected. I mean nobody saw it coming. <laughs> nobody imagined that the resistance against the government of William Samuel Ruto would come right from his own backyard, deep in Kalenjin Rift Valley. Nobody saw that coming. Indeed, even now as I speak, there are so many Kenyans who do not believe it is happening. They are assuming that it is fake news, propaganda. It is not possible. Because the Mutuetu syndrome, according to most Kenyans, can never be defeated in the country called Kenya. It has destroyed us as a nation, but it will never be defeated. That is the belief of many, many, many Kenyans, including wise Kenyans who have seen it all. But what is happening right now in the Rift Valley 
I assure you, is very real. It is not propaganda. It is real and it is unfolding. I mean, think about it. When a leader within the Kalenjin community addresses his own people, in fact in mother tongue, to tell them where Ruto must go, that is not propaganda. You can never make up that. You can never invent that. It is happening. Now, stay with me and I will give you my prediction as well as deep analysis of just how long this root administration is going to survive. And by the way, it will never reach 2027. Never. Stick around and I will explain and give you evidence of why that is absolutely true. But first, a quick word from our sponsors for our show today. Surely it should say something when a sponsor comes back again and again. Especially in the case of our sponsor today. They must be very happy with the results. Okay, and this is Dennis Rosenta, a very interesting product. <laughs> because one of the things it does is to deal with aging, especially premature aging. It reverses aging. Okay, it also strengthens the immune system. I am very sure people my age and older would be very interested in this particular product. Yeah, but of course, younger Kenyans will have no idea what the excitement is all about. <laughs> right. What exactly did Alfred Gatell, former Nandi Hills legislator, mean when he said in a speech made mainly in the local language? Yeah, what did he mean when he said, if you don't fix economy, we change you. What did he mean? And he followed that by saying that the problem in Kenya is that we support our own. And when they get into power and we continue to suffer, we still support them. Even when the problems as a result of their administration knock right on our doors. That is what Alfred Kitter said. What did he mean? More so in a backdrop where we have heard in the Rift Valley for the first time the words Ruto must go. And this is not even an Azimio rally. No, it's not. It's local politics in the Rift Valley. I think the best answer to that question is to use Alfred Gettel's own words in an earlier speech where he told Kenyans there is no petrol station where the Kalenjin community goes to refuel their vehicles that is different from the one where the opposition go to refuel their vehicles. That is what Alfred Gettel said. And he quickly added that when he talks like this, he's told, where? Shut up. You are a Kalenjin. The insinuation is, of course, is that you must support your own when they're in government, no matter how much they mess up. They're your own. It is your own son. Therefore, you must support. That is the insinuation that Alfred Gatter and his supporters in the Rift Valley and a growing number of people in the Rift Valley are now saying no to. And this is a perfect illustration of why the Ruto administration has gotten to where it has gotten to today. To summarize it in a brief sentence, you don't raid the pockets of the people you're ruling, even those who come from your own community and expect to get away with it. You don't. It can never happen. 
You see, months ago, a prediction came to my attention that I found very difficult to believe, where somebody predicted that the rebellion against the Root Administration would start in the Rift Valley amongst his own community and also in the Mount Kenya region. Mount Kenya region was very easy to believe, but not the Rift Valley. Well, today, that is no longer a prediction that is too difficult to believe. However, I also kicked myself when I went back into the spiritual and realized that actually what is happening in the Rift Valley should have been very predictable. I even realized that in several of my videos, I emphasized this spiritual point in great detail. And yet here I was, refusing to believe a prediction that really talks about that spiritual law I talked about months ago. Don't worry, this is going to be a brief point. Because many of us have no regard for the spiritual. But very quickly, it is not possible to rebel against your boss, to cause your boss problems. And then when you take over your boss's seat, your boss's post, leadership position, you expect what you did to him will not happen to you. That is not possible. Can never be possible. It is like the law of gravity. Now Kenyans will remember towards the tail end of the Uhuru Kenyatta administration, there was a rebellion against President Uhuru Kenyatta, the then president, from his own backyard. And there are no prizes for guessing who engineered that rebellion. It was engineered by William Ruto and UDA. And now, slightly over a year later, we have the same thing happening to the sitting president from his own backyard, from his own people. It is just a spiritual law. Whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to ignore it or not, it will never change the fact that this must happen. But let us even assume for a minute that what is happening in the Rift Valley against Ruto is not happening. Still, this presidency would be in very huge problems for the simple fact that the last line of defense in terms of support for the president is gone. Because when your own do not support you, really, that's it. Your presidency no longer has anything left to hold on to. And so let us quickly look at the main reasons why the Root administration is doomed. Yeah, before I give you my prediction. Point number one, incompetence. You see the Moy administration survive for a long time, even when there was strong opposition against it. Why? Because Moy was very competent. He had the skills, the knowledge to stay in power, which seems to be lacking in the Ruto presidency. And it is not only about promises made during campaigns that are not fulfilled. No, it doesn't end there. It is also about statements, official statements from government that not only never come to pass, but some of them are blatant lies, not factual. Let me give you a quick example. A member of Ruto's cabinet comes out and tells us that we should expect fuel prices to continue climbing because of the war in Israel. And then shortly after that, we hear from other neighboring governments, the very opposite, that they're dropping their fuel prices, they are lowering petrol prices because of the same war in Israel. <laughs> yeah. Now, let us be honest with ourselves. If there was anybody still supporting the Ruto administration, after that statement from a cabinet minister, somebody very close to Ruto 
what do you think the opinion would be after that statement and after what unfolded i just want you to answer that question for yourself please what do you think the opinion would be after something like that happens all confidence would go through the window poof gone and in fact this even raises some very disturbing questions why would the government want to increase fuel prices when actually their cost of importing that fuel is going down why would it be for the reason of lining individuals pockets making certain people rich in that government even as the people of kenya continue to suffer those are the questions one would ask don't you think and i'll give you another quick example nothing to do with money the government came out and said that according to experts probably their own experts el nino was not going to come yeah the predicted el nino was not going to happen indeed ruto told us this himself what is happening currently el nino has come as experts indeed told us or at least the experts we know not the experts the government seems to know which seem to be different el nino has come with a vengeance and the result is it has caught the government completely unaware even funds donations that had been made towards dealing with el nino were most probably reallocated to other things and now el nino has come and the government has been caught off guard unaware and ready now isn't that gross incompetence on the side of a government and what is even sad about this is that flooding is so serious that kenyan lives have been lost as a result of this grave error in judgment by the ruto government point number 2 is believing that you can run a government on propaganda perception building things that have served you very well in rising to the presidency the grave error is in thinking that the same things can help you govern and remain in power now this one was a very fatal mistake because you see when you take over a government it is very different from criticizing a government anybody can criticize a government and assume things are very easy for that government but you see when you're in government there are some things you cannot hide under the table there are some things you cannot try to change using propaganda and perception one perfect example is the exchange rate of the kenya shilling to the dollar now actually you'll remember that this government tried to tell kenyans that the kenyan shilling has been overvalued in the past and now that the real value of the kenya shilling is showing that is why it is dropping like a stone they tried to sell that story to kenyans kenyans of course did not buy it you know confidence of the people in their government is also a major contributing factor to the exchange rate for the simple reason that confidence in a government is what makes a big business person make huge investments yeah because they know they are safe the investment is safe in the hands of that government but when big investors feel unsafe in the hands of a government that is the quickest way for the local currency to lose value against hard currencies that is just simple logic you don't have to be an economist to get that one it is very simple logic and this is precisely what has happened in kenya point number 3 a government that does things that don't make sense in fact some of these things defy logic let us look at two quick examples 
you increase taxes in an economy that is ailing, hoping to collect more taxes. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. And indeed today, we are seeing that the government is collecting less and less revenue the more they hike taxes. Okay? Now, of course, that defies logic. Why keep on hiking taxes when you can see the results in front of your eyes? Doesn't make sense. Point number two. It seems that the president only visits Kenya but actually lives abroad. Because when you look at the number of days the president is in the country and the number of days they are out of the country, it is very difficult to believe that that president actually lives in Kenya. Very difficult. Now, why so many foreign trips? Surely, you can send somebody on some of these foreign trips like past presidents have done in Kenya. Why do you need to go yourself? For example, the visits to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Why is it not possible to make only one or two trips? And then you send other people to complete whatever deal you're negotiating in the same country. Well, one explanation is that Ruto is a micromanager. Yeah, he wants to do everything himself. Now, it should be simple logic that as president of a country, it is not possible to rule by managing every small thing yourself, by being a micromanager. It is not possible not possible in a hundred years and of course the worst of it all is that this administration cannot be corrected they do not take advice they do not take counsel and therefore this is my prediction of course the root administration will do everything in their power to remain at the helm yeah but my prediction is ruto can go home at any time okay the way so much is happening so very fast the end of the Ruto presidency can happen at any time that is the reality however assuming that they're very lucky they get a few breaks here and there this government will not see the end of the year 2024 Maybe you should get a little generous. Mid-2025 tops. I don't know what you think. Yeah, based on the facts on the ground. Please let me know in the comments area below. For now, please allow me to give you a very important heads up. At least this information will prove to be valuable to some of us on this channel. This channel reaches a very unique audience. Kenyans in the diaspora, older Kenyans. You know the channels reach a lot of young people. Yeah, and unfortunately, most young people don't have much purchasing power. But the purchasing power in the views on this channel <laughs> are huge. And we have proved that. Somebody advertised some land the other day in Naivasha. Within hours of that video going up, it was sold. And we're talking about a double-digit million. And therefore, if you have a product or service that you need to promote, I think you should seriously consider sponsoring a Kumekucha video. Yeah, that means that you get a mention in all of my videos and a lot more to let others know what you're doing. And I'm sure a lot of your potential clients always tune in very regularly to this channel and therefore it is a fabulous amazing opportunity for you to reach your audience very cheaply and very effectively kindly check in the description area of this video for more details and then you can also send me an email on that email address you see on your screens right now or even call directly on that number for more information because we can't do this for everybody and we do not produce that many videos yeah therefore i suggest that you take action immediately so that you don't lose this golden 
opportunity. Now there's one of us, a subscriber, who has come up with a very interesting offer. They are going to sponsor two people to take advantage of our latest offer. All you have to do is pay half the price and they'll pay the other half. For you, of course it is on a first come, first served basis. So please rush. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucho.